Today we're taking a look at Nidus, the infested Warframe. Wow, that is disgusting. So you're supposed to be the infested Warframe, and in theory could be the first Warframe. Nidus is a fan favorite, and for obvious reasons. He has a ton of tank properties, can regenerate health super fast, does a ton of damage, and can scale nicely into higher level missions, and is generally a badass with a perfect synergized kit. Nidus is cool and is an extremely polished and well-designed Warframe. In fact, Nidus is special for that very reason. He is the first Warframe that we've had that has this perfect synergy. Nidus' abilities are all equally effective, which is why it's incredible that he was even conceived in the first place during development and made it onto release. Nidus has revolutionized the way we view synergy. While through reworks we got more or less tacky add-on synergy from Saren and Mag, Nidus gave us the entire package in one go, which is why he's so special. Not only is he a Warframe that is fundamentally different from the rest of the roster, he's a frame that excels from all four abilities, and as a result, the subzium system just flew right over his head. No need to slap on buffers when the kit is already perfect. Nidus is a representation of how Warframe design could be, and while not every frame needs to go as far as Nidus did, it's a breath of fresh air finally seeing a Warframe have four good abilities that relate to each other in an organic way. So, let's take a trip through time and rewind back to 2016 and see where it all started. Nidus first struck on Update 19.5, The Glass Gambit. This quest was really bad on release, and it was a very tedious quest, having to do so many index runs in order to complete it. I'm not sure if they improved it or streamlined the whole process through patches, but on release, it was a major pain in the ass having to do this quest for the main blueprint. Then, after that was done, you had to do Infested Salvage, which wasn't too bad considering you could solo it with Ember and the Simulor, but still having those drops on Rotation C was pretty grindy. That's really the only negative aspect about Nidus. His farm for the base variant is very tedious, although with the advent of Nidus Prime, that's not a huge issue, so get cracking I suppose. And as for Nidus himself, well, this was an interesting case. Nidus is the second Warframe to release without any shields. This meant that Nidus alongside Inaros only use health, but to compensate for the lack of shields, they have high armor. But what separates Nidus with Inaros is the fact that Inaros needs to use his abilities to regenerate health. Nidus is the only Warframe in the entire game with a passive health regeneration at base, and this can be increased by using his abilities. This was the first major factor about Nidus and why he was so distinct amongst the roster at the time. He was a frame that had no shields and had a lower health bar than Inaros, but compensated for it by having passive healing, as well as having a complete kit. Nidus is the first Warframe who needs to use all four abilities to make the most use of his kit, while other Warframes generally spam 1-2 to two abilities, which is their bread and butter, while occasionally using a third, most frames don't really have that synergy that Nidus offered. Nidus had a clear order and when following this order, you got the most bang for your energy. Virulence allows Nidus to slam the ground, sending out a wave of infestation dealing damage. Larva allows Nidus to group up enemies in a vortex which makes hitting multiple enemies with Virulence even easier. Parasitic Link allows Nidus to link to an enemy, and all damage that Nidus takes is instead transferred to the enemy that's been linked, allowing Nidus to stave off attacks more effectively, giving him damage reduction. And Ravenous, which is Nidus' ultimate, allows Nidus to spawn a patch of infestation that will further boost the efficacy of his health regeneration as well as his other abilities. But more importantly, the mutation passive. You see, Nidus works off of his passive, which in turn lets his entire kit play out in a perfect synergized format. Upon hitting enemies with virulence, Nidus builds up mutation stacks. These stacks affect Nidus directly and his abilities. When building up your stacks, your virulence becomes more effective, but also allows Nidus to actually use his third and fourth ability, because those abilities don't cost energy, they cost mutation stacks. And at max mutation stacks, Nidus becomes undying, and if Nidus enters a bleed out state, he will instead defy death and sacrifice mutation stacks. Mutation is what ties Nidus together, and his abilities all work in a perfect synergized format. 
No other Warframe at the time has had this perfect synergy, and Nidus revolutionized Warframe because of it. He became the Synergy God. A Warframe that isn't just a one-button ability spammer. A Warframe that requires the use of all four abilities to make the most use of his design. However, this may all sound great if the Warframe is actually good, if these powers have good stats and function properly in the general game. And thankfully for us, Nidus is excellent. Nidus released and immediately took the community by storm, instantly becoming a fan favorite. And mind you, this was back in 2016, many years ago when the meta was not as heavy in damage crept as it is now. Now imagine that, a meta where melees are most predominant and Rhino is running around everywhere in the index, to having an infested soldier obliterating everything it sees in its path, while defying death itself. Nidus shook the meta and instantly became top tier for endless missions and higher level content on his merits alone. My recent video on Nidus, you know <laughs> that I like Nidus a lot. Nidus is very quickly probably becoming my favorite Warframe. He is an A+, plus, without a doubt. His powers work together in such a just good, coherent way that I could not possibly praise the design of Nidus enough. From the way his path but while Nidus was an excellent Warframe, we did see some nerfs shortly after his release, changing his Ravenous. Update 19.6 removed the functionality of the Maggots from Ravenous, so now they no longer auto-detonate when on enemies. Now Nidus must cast Virulence to blow them up, which sounds fine, if the goddamn things didn't run off every two seconds into the middle of nowhere. And the sacrifice requirement was bumped up to 15 stacks instead of 10, so when defying death, you had to sacrifice 15. Which wasn't that bad since getting 5 more stacks was very easy with Larva and Virulence alone. But the biggest nerf to Nidus this update was the fact that if Nidus now entered a nullifier bubble, his stacks would decay, which made no sense at the time. This was a resource to Nidus, just like energy, but if you entered a bubble, your energy doesn't go away. See where I'm getting at? It was a bizarre change that neutered Nidus a lot in Corpus missions and in the Void. The other nerf seemed reasonable, I suppose, but this one was not necessary, and at the time, Nullifier Bubbles went through walls and didn't have their drone to one-shot them. Nullifiers were a really strong subject at the time, and this was another unnecessary buff to them that pissed off a large portion of the community. But at the very least, the Maggot's health was bumped up to a thousand. I mean, not that it matters. But thankfully, this was the only nerf Nidus got, for the time being. It wasn't until years later where Nidus received more changes. But during this time, Nidus remained as an excellent Warframe for higher level and endless activities. For survivals, he's great. For defense, he's valuable. And for excavation, he's more than usable. Nidus was excellent for these types of game modes. Now, some might argue that Nidus is only good for these longer based missions. And while that may be true due to the fact that Nidus could not build up mutation in shorter levels like Captures and Exterminates, that didn't deter the fact that Nidus was an excellent Warframe that had a design and kit truly represent real synergy, not some tacky weapon shenanigans that Mag had. Nidus had revolutionized Warframe. Finally, a Warframe that felt good to press 1, 2, 3, and 4. A Warframe that had a good passive, and a Warframe that worked perfectly in endless activities in a logical manner. Every other frame before Nidus always had one or two abilities that were not as great, or in other cases only used one ability. But after the release of Nidus, we started to see his design philosophy extend to newer frames. Octavia, Harrow, and Gara were all Warframes that tried to implement this design within their kit, trying to tie each ability together so the kit is more cohesive instead of being four separate abilities. And when it came to reworks like Nasia and Saren 3.0, it feels like they were directly inspired inspired by Nidus himself and how his abilities function in a natural way. And at the very least, Nidus had also solidified himself as a top tier Warframe for the core game modes, which is an excellent accomplishment. Now Nidus had remained, very stagnant, which is not a bad thing. He's very strong when fully stacked, and his abilities haven't received any tweaks or changes to the way they function. And as a result, Nidus, while not receiving any major tools, stood in the face of power creep. 
planes released and it didn't bother Nidus. Fortuna launched and Nidus was still excellent. We got plenty of events and updates and Nidus still remained as an excellent Warframe. He didn't need any new tools because his abilities were so good on their own. It was almost like he was meta proof. Larva Burst was nice, now dealing a ton of toxin damage, but it wasn't mandatory. Insatiable was great, building up stacks faster, but it also wasn't necessary to use as if you were in an endless mission, you would build up to 100 anyways. Teaming Virulence was awesome, but it was once again just an optional mod that boosted primaries which Nidus didn't rely on. While Nidus had more diverse build options with these mods, it still didn't affect his core gameplay in any way. However, as time did go on, and with more focus on shorter missions being the go-to for farming, such as fishers and bounties, Nidus actually started to see less usage, simply because people weren't running endless missions as much as they did anymore. Nidus didn't really excel at quick A to B activities. He needed an endless supply of enemies to continue stacking and building. But again, that's not a bad thing, because not every frame needs to be good at everything, and Nidus is a clear example of that. There isn't a huge reason to bring Nidus on a capture mission or coup of floods. Nidus requires that mutation buildup, and that's his main caveat. But despite not being used that often, Nidus is still a good Warframe which is honestly rare to see. Most frames that are underused have gotten power crept and forgotten, but Nidus still stands as a great DPS tank for the missions he excels at. And when Arbitration is released, Nidus was one of the top tier Warframes at the time when farming that game mode. Defying Death was a very valuable quality, and while the punishment has been drastically reduced in today's Arbitration, back then Nidus was still hella good for what he can do in his setting. But Nidus also saw huge attraction in a very specific farm. You see, we have to rewind the clock a little bit. Back in April of 2016, when the Rathum event launched, this update overhauled the long-standing Kayla to Thame, which... Yeah, the original one was... not very exciting to say the least. This update introduced the first arena, Rathum, which is a Grenier-oriented arena mode. You have no Sentinel or Companion available, and have to kill these special Grenier Enforcers. These enemies are pretty tough to kill at times, and can also bypass your defenses very easily. Once completing the arena, you are given Judgment Points, and you can use these points to enter the boss node and fight Kayla head-on. And, not gonna lie, this boss fight is really good, and one of the better designed fights in my opinion. But more importantly, this update introduced the arenas and shortly after, in June, we got the node Vodyanoi. Vodyanoi was at the time one of the highest level nodes in the game, starting off at level 80. This arena was the hardest of them all, but the most rewarding. To be specific, Reinforcements Modifier. This ensures the run spawns more enemies, and more enemies to kill means the run goes by faster. But more importantly, you have a higher chance at more... Fusion Cores. Or, well, Endo. The fusion system did get reworked before Nidus release, so in this case, Endo. Nidus was crucial to this meta because he was the most effective Vortex frame at the time, and before the subzoom system was released, Nidus was core to making this endo farm optimal, and as a result, saw huge attraction on that merit alone. Pair this with two Necros and a buffer frame, and you had a solid endo farm. But, come Pilfering Strangle Dome's release, this setup was fully complete and Vodyanoi, or Yam depending on your RNG, was now the go-to endo farm and it was all thanks to Nidus. Steel Path was also another boon to Nidus, but it wasn't until after the changes to Steel Essence and Accolade introduction where Nidus shined, as now people who just want to get into Steel Path or farm Steel Essence can use Nidus, who was very effective at maintaining stacks while killing enemies in a constant flow. And of course, Steel Path had the mod drop booster, so running Vodinoi on Steel Path was the better choice if you wanted more endo, and Nidus once again saw a lot of use. And while Heart of Deimos did release Larva to be a subzoom, it didn't impact Nidus as much as you think it would due to the fact that the original Larva has its full range, whereas the subzoom version has diminished range. And as a result, Nidus still sees high play rates for endo farming because he had the full version of Larva. Update 27.2 was also a big update for Warframe, but unfortunately Nidus was not impacted by shield gating, mainly because he has no shields. 
but he does have health gating thanks to his passive, which gives him the extra edge. And obviously, the changes to Viral and Scaling helped him quite a bit since Nidus is a more endless-oriented Warframe. And thankfully, this update didn't alter Nidus in a negative way, and he doesn't need to abuse the shield gating method. The best part about Nidus is that over the years ever since his release, he saw little to no changes after update 19.6, whereas other frames still needed updates and tweaks and changes to keep up. Nidus also didn't even care about subzooms because his kit was perfect as is, so if you wanted to take Nidus into the late game or endless missions without any subzooms, that was totally okay compared to other frames who did see huge benefits when replacing abilities instead of using the stock kit. That's what happens when you design a Warframe with true synergy in mind. And here we are in 2023. Nidus still stands strong. So let's see what this plague is all about. Nidus' passive brings his entire kit together and is the sole reason why Nidus is considered the synergy god in Warframe. Nidus uses a unique mechanic called Mutation. The more abilities Nidus uses, the more mutation he stacks up, and the more mutation he stacks up, the more potent his powers become. You have to engage with the system in order to use Nidus. The meter is divided into 5 sections, which represents the number of hits dealt to enemies from his abilities. Once all 5 sections of the gauge fills up, the mutation level is increased and the cycle can repeat itself until level 100. You don't have to deal damage to gain stacks, only ability contact is needed, so when you're starting off at Steel Path, you don't actually have to kill much to gain levels. And once you do reach 15 stacks or higher, upon death, Nidus will defy and sacrifice 15 stacks of mutation and gains a 5 second immunity while generating 50% health again. This means that at 100 stacks of mutation, you have an additional 6 lives, but while mutation is defying death, you can still continue to build up stacks again. This passive alone gives Nidus huge self-sustainability and is a solo player's best friend, as defying death this many times is incredibly valuable. Nidus is currently the only frame that can indefinitely defy death, whereas Wukong only has 3 additional lives. When building up mutation, you also gain benefits to your other abilities. Virulence does more damage, the Magus explosions also do more damage. Parasitic Link also costs 1 stack to activate, and Ravenous will only cost 3. Mutation also has an augment, and makes Nidus one of the few Warframes that have a passive augment. Abundant Mutation, and this new cap also affects his abilities as well, making them more potent. But the big catch is, Undying gains a new 30 second cooldown, and if Nidus dies before the cooldown resets, he loses all stacks and bleed out which is a major blow. Nidus also visually changes in appearance once he reaches 3, 5, 7, and 10 stacks, and at the 10th stack he becomes a mutated infested warrior. This is also another great visual indicator as instead of just showing a bar that says 10, Nidus himself evolves over time and becomes even more of a badass. Nidus' first ability is Virulence. Nidus ruptures the ground to unleash a linear growth of fungal infestation of up to 16 meters long and 4 meters wide towards a targeted location. Enemies struck by the growth are staggered and dealt 200 base damage which is amplified by the number of mutation stacks accumulated, as well as refunding energy for each enemy hit. The damage is boosted by strength and the damage is ironically 100% puncture, which is a bit strange considering it's infested. I would assume it might make more sense for it to deal slash, but that would make him too OP, I guess. The energy refund is also inversely affected by ability efficiency because it is always 25% of energy used to cast per enemy, and fungal growth length is affected by range, while the width is not. Longer lengths will cover more ground faster, such that the casting time is very similar at all ranges, but negative ranges are slightly faster to cast since the wave will travel a lesser distance, which allows you to recast again. Unfortunately, this was one of the major changes that Nidus did receive on his initial release, because day one, you were allowed to just spam the ability again and again, whereas now you have to wait for the wave to finish. There is some great ability synergy with Virulence as well. Virulence increases Nidus' mutation stacks by 1 fifth per enemy hit, 
Mutation gain per enemy is not affected by mods. However, while Nidus is connected to a target via Parasitic Link, using Virulence will spawn a second instance from the Link target that grows towards the targeted location, which will converge with the first instance from Nidus. Enemies hit by the second instance also increase mutation stacks. Magus spawned from Ravenous will also immediately explode when hit by Virulence, stacking mutation even more. Another cool trick with Virulence is that you can hold the ability to showcase an indicator of where you want the wave to go, thus making it a bit easier to aim with Virulence. Nidus' second ability is Larva. Nidus ejects an infested larva at high speed towards the targeted location over unrestricted range. Upon impact or reactivation by pressing the ability key again, the larva will rapidly mature into a floating mass of infested tentacles that sprout tendrils to grab all enemies within line of sight and a radius of 12 meters. Affected enemies are forcibly ragdolled and pulled into the mass, becoming unable to move or attack. Larva will wither away when it has no enemies to grip, or if it is used when no enemies are in range. The grab radius is boosted by range, and the duration is affected by duration, and grabbed enemies drop to the ground upon Larva's expiration. Each enemy killed from any source while being held by Larva will have a 50% chance to generate a mutation stack. However, the stack chance is not boosted by mods. This ability is really good for Nidus, as it allows him to group enemies up and strike them all with virulence, which allows Nidus to deal insane damage and builds up his mutation really fast. The ability is also a subzoom, but with diminished range. But even with this range reduction, it's still a pretty solid ability for other Warframes. Larva is also one-handed, so you can still move around and reload, which is fantastic. Larva in general is just a solid ability because grouping enemies is always useful, and even after the Eximus changes, Nida still tanks and does a lot of damage anyways, so removing the Overguard to re Larva is always an option. This ability is also Nidus' bread and butter, and it has some interesting properties with its augment, Larva Burst. Larva Burst allows Nidus to detonate the Larva, dealing toxin damage, depending on how many enemies you've grabbed in. Pair this with the Archon continuity, and you're able to dish out some good corrosive damage. Nidus' third ability is Parasitic Link. Nidus performs Symbiosis with an ally within range, and... Okay, in all honesty, yeah, I wouldn't want to be linked by this thing either, but... This thing also gives me free ability power and damage, so... I guess it's somewhat justifiable. If Nidus links to an ally, they both get more power, but if Nidus links to an enemy, he gets damage reduction and all negative status effects are transferred from Nidus to a linked enemy. The linked enemy is also incapacitated for the full duration. The ability strength bonus, damage bonus, and damage redirection are affected by power strength. Parasitic Link's ability strength boost also affects ability strength multiplicatively using the following formula. The Link damage bonus is also multiplicative to other damage buffers as well, which is kinda crazy. The damage redirection is also capped at 90% and is achievable with at least 180% ability power. The main synergy that Link also has here is with Virulence. When casting Virulence while an enemy or ally is linked, the linked enemy will have a Virulence wave emerge from their point, creating a second Virulence wave which will also increase mutation stacks, even if the second virulence hits the enemy that was struck by the first virulence. Overall, this ability is really powerful and gives Nidus huge amounts of DR and survivability, as well as boosting his own damage and allies for the action of just... linking. It really makes Nidus a hard tank that can scale super nicely in high level activities. And lastly, Nidus' ultimate. I have nothing to say. Carry on. Nidus converts three mutation stacks into Ravenous Infestation, which spreads outwards from Nidus and across the surrounding landscape to create spawning grounds with a diameter of 8 meters that linger for 40 seconds. Nidus and his allies will generate 20 health per second when inside the spawning ground. Health regeneration per second is affected by strength, 
and the health regeneration buff area is an invisible cylinder, allowing eligible targets to retain the buff up to a height of 8 meters above the spawning grounds. But the diameter and height are not affected by range, and the duration is affected by duration. But Ravenous has a very large duration, so even with minimal duration, you're gonna have Ravenous up to over a minute. The infested cysts form on the spawning grounds, hatching up to 9 maggots that seek out nearby enemies to feast upon. Once enemies are detected, maggots frenzy with an increased movement speed and leap towards their prey to latch onto them. While latched onto an enemy, each maggot will continuously stun its targets and inflict 10 toxin damage per second until the target dies or the maggot expires. The number of active maggots and toxin damage are unfortunately not affected by strength but the toxin damage is amplified by the mutation stacks. When maggots are killed or are hit by virulence, when their host dies or when ravenous duration expires, the maggots will explode dealing blast damage to all enemies within a 4 meter radius. The explosion radius can be boosted by range and the damage by both power strength and mutation stacks. The main synergy Ravenous has here is with Virulence. When Virulence strikes the maggots, they explode dealing damage, and if the enemy does die from the maggot explosion or from the toxin damage, Nidus will gain a mutation stack. This also stacks with Virulence, making for a pretty decent combo to gain stacks fast. And this all ties perfectly together with Larva and Parasitic Link. As a Parasitic Link, you're having another Virulence wave, and enemies that are struck by a Larva will help you gain another stack, thus making each ability flow very nicely together. The only downside to Ravenous is that the breeding grounds do not scale with range, so you can't cover a larger radius with it, although this may be a good thing in certain scenarios where you don't want a high range and have a nullifier walk all over you. Ravenous also has one augment called Insatiable, where Nidus has a chance to gain an additional mutation stack while in Ravenous. The base 60% chance increases with power mods, and multiple stacks are possible above 100%, which allows Nidus to generate a lot of stacks in a short period of time, which further boosts his survivability and damage. And ironically, this augment also works pretty well with Abundant Mutation, as you can reach 200 stacks very easily. And that's that. Nidus. The Infestation. And to be honest, I'm really glad that you don't exist in real life because I'm sure as hell you'd cause another insert global pandemic. Honestly, I think you and Saren were made for each other. But viruses aside, Nidus is an excellent Warframe and has remained great ever since his release in the Glass Gambit. Nidus can scale well, do a lot of damage, tank like a complete boss. Nidus has a perfect kit and a fantastic synergy. There isn't a single ability that is bad. He has shown us that it's possible to create a Warframe that can juggle all four abilities and maintaining a perfect cycle. While Nidus may not be the most popular Warframe today, and really only shines on endless missions, that doesn't deter the fact that Nidus has changed the way we view Warframe design. He has revolutionized Warframe. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more in the future, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let me know your thoughts about Nidus down below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.